We often want to select and style our elements based on their element type. In this clip, we walk through the type selectors. We'll cover more selectors in the next clip. In the prior clip, we introduced the universal selector, which matches all elements. We used it to reset all elements to zero margin. We've used the type selector in our prior example. The browser selects for styling all of the elements of that type. In this example, it selects all P elements. We can also select multiple element types. The browser then selects for styling all of the elements of each of the types. This example selects all H1, H2, and H3 elements. And we can combine these selectors for more complex requirements using something called combinators. There are many combinators that define different relationships between the selectors. We'll cover one in this course, the descendant combinator. We indicate a descendant combinator using a space between the selectors. The first selector defines the parent element. The second selector defines the descendant element. These are child or grandchild elements within the parent element. The browser then selects for styling only the elements of that type within that parent. In this example, the browser selects P descendant elements within the main parent element. We'll see this in the upcoming Coding Along demo shortly. The lesson links link to information on the other, less common selector combinators. Let's try out the type selectors and the descendant combinator. VS Code is here on the left with the Resume folder open and live server running. Our resulting web page is here on the right. We've already been using type selectors for our headings, header, and P elements. Recall that we removed all of the browser's default margins using a universal selector. This makes our paragraphs look a bit crowded. Scrolling down, let's add to the P selector a margin of 24px space 8px. The first number is the size of the top and bottom margin. The second number is the size of the left and right margin. We'll talk more about margins shortly. Looking at the browser, that looks a bit less crowded. Now let's try multiple element types. Notice that we are repeating the text color in each of our heading styles. Let's create a selector to remove that duplication. We define a selector of H1, comma, H2, and copy the color into the style declaration. Then we can delete the color from the individual type selectors. Now it's easier to see or change the color because it's in one place. Cool! For our next style declaration, we need a bit more in our HTML page. In the index.html file, let's add a footer with our name and page number. Scroll down. We'll add a footer element and a P element with our desired text. We want our name and the page number. Notice that the styling of the new text immediately changes to match the text in the main part of the page. Why is that? Clicking on the style sheet, do you see why? Here we have a selector that selects all P elements. Looking at our HTML again, we only want to style the paragraphs that are within the main element, not any other paragraphs on the page. We do that using a descendant combinator. Click on the style.css file. Let's add main in front of the P selector. And now the selector only selects the paragraphs within the main element. Looking at the browser, we see that the paragraph in our footer wasn't selected for styling. It displays with the browser's default styles. There are more selectors to try, so let's leave our code and browser as they are and jump back to the slides for a moment. So, use a type selector to style all of one type of element, such as all the P elements in this example. Use multiple type selectors, separated by commas, to style all of the specified elements. This example selects all H1 and H2 elements for styling and combine selectors using a descendant combinator to select a set of elements within the specified parent element. Next up, let's check out more ways to specify a selector. 
If you like this video, please like and subscribe.